And then we get to the car and I try to get in and I can't get in. It, it just hurt too much. When I, when I pushed off my back leg, my whole spine just lit up. But then I also couldn't come back out. So I'm stuck with like one inch of mobility. And now I'm starting to get tired because I'm trying to hold myself up. And it's just all pain. Nina's trying to push me from my <laughs> butt right. cheek to like, yeah, to just to get in. And then I just start crying because I get so overwhelmed that I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I can't go forward. I can't go back. I'm not talking to myself anymore to say, hey, Evan, dude, you're crushing me. <laughs> You may know today's guest because of his wildly popular Top 10 Rules to Success series. You may even be one of his over 2 million YouTube subscribers that makes up Believe Nation, but I've known Evan Carmichael for almost 15 years now. And being as tight as we are, what follows is a deeper and more direct conversation than I think I've ever seen Evan go. So please help me welcome to the We Do Hard Things podcast, the champion of Believe, the man who wants to impact over a billion entrepreneurs, Evan Carmichael. So something that I find the most impressive about coming to know you over the last 15 years, we can't hide the fact that I've known you for a very long 15 time. 15 years, wow. That's well, maybe it's not that long, 2007, 14 years, let's say that, is, um, man, you move, you move, you move, you move quick, you move quickly. Um, and yet through all of this, like you're, you're like, you care about something tremendously and put a ton of time and a ton of energy and a ton of passion and you're able to drive forward. And then a month later, you're like, oh, I don't know, whatever, that's old news. I'm on to the next thing. How is it that you're able to get anything done when you're so busy moving so quickly on so many things, but it's like this, like the most important thing to you. And then you don't care about it for six months. Like, how do you push things forward with that kind of inconsistency? I don't judge myself for the inconsistency. I think that's the starting point. I, I think energy matters. I think when you are excited about something and then you delay and you delay and you delay, and then it's a, a week later and a month later, and then you come back to that, I think you missed a golden opportunity. And mm -hmm. so I've learned this wasn't something that I just did when I was a kid. I think I missed out on opportunities. I think um, I was afraid to go for opportunities. I've learned to trust myself more to say, you know what? I've got an idea. Because it came to me, it's amazing. And so I have to do something about it. Right. And this is not something I say out loud because it, it feels so wrong to say out loud. Uh, sounds very egotistical. And, you know, you put that in a YouTube video, you're going to get destroyed in the comments but it's it's literally the voice that i have inside my head that gives me the confidence and courage to go forward i came up with an idea and i'll tell myself you came up with this idea yeah how is this Therefore, a good idea amazing. How, how is this a good idea for your business so marks so you're holding up uh uh i'm holding up a collector edition yeah. of evan's entrepreneur business card series from 2010. That's when these were created. So I, I decided I wanted to make my own trading cards. Uh, I feel like entrepreneurs are superheroes. And if we can reward our athletes with trading cards, why not entrepreneurs? And I did it to raise money for Kiva, uh, which is a charity that helps um, micro loan entrepreneurs. And we've raised six figures for it. It's crazy. Like, at the time it was a hundred thousand. And since then it's been, I don't know exactly where we're at. I can, I can fact check if you want for the podcast, but it's over six figures that we raised for it. Um, it's funny that some of the people that we profiled have fond memories of it. You know, I just interviewed Seth Godin for my channel. He's got a new book out. I even did for my channel. And the first question was, do you remember that thing we did <laughs> way back in what year is it? 2011? 20, I don't know. 2010, they were released. So you must, so, I mean, you so this is this 10 years months. ago. Yeah. This is 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah. The first question, I haven't talked to Seth for a couple of years. First question I asked is I show him the cards. Like, do you remember this? The back, right? That entrepreneur card series that I did. And he's like, yeah, I picked Duncan Hines, right? Uh, he remembers who he picked. He remembers. He remembers a thing. And so it was a great, it was a great cause to uh, show that we could help entrepreneurs through Kiva. 
it allowed me to connect to people like Seth and other people who I didn't have as tight a connection to before. Um, even a couple of days ago, I was reading Ray Dalio's principles. And one of the things in the book is he made baseball cards for everybody on his team yeah. to highlight strengths and weaknesses. And I underlined that like, Ooh, maybe I should go back and do the baseball cards thing again. That's interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to noodle that one away. Uh, and so, you know, I haven't thought about the cards at all. I just, I just remember, because I knew you at the time, thinking this is not only a ridiculous thing to do, um, a, waste, a waste of time, a waste of effort. You're going to, like, I don't know, you spent six months or something. And, and it wasn't your only focus, of course, at the time. But it's easy now, 10 years later, for me to make a reference point. Or let's say your top 10 you know, rules to success or, or anything that's kind of was something that led to something. It's easy to look back and go like, well, that was a really smart move. But you, you, did, you did whatever, 15 other things that just popped into your mind that didn't make it. And some of them make it and some of them don't. And when you're looking back, you're like, that was a smart move. But in the time, I just can't bring myself to try that many things that just feel foolish. Um, but I just don't judge it. I wanted to do it, so I did it. And, and anything that I consistently apply pressure against and effort and energy ends up finding some way to work out. Mm. And I could never have predicted that in 2010, I would have, hey, raised six figures for Kiva and have this great conversation 10 years later with Seth Godin about the cards that I created and he was a part of, right? Uh, I, I just don't judge it. And that allows me to go and create. And I think we're always trying to figure out what the game plan is going to be and how it's perfectly going to play out in our plan. And you just can't. But I do think that sitting on your idea and doing nothing about it is a guaranteed way to having no results coming. Hmm. And so you just start, you just do it. If it's something that you're excited about and passionate about and you keep doing it, you'll get you'll get stuff to happen. I mean, a story I, I tell about you a lot on the, on other podcasts that I'm on, uh, which is great to tell on yours is, is about Kanye West. And, and, you know, part of why he's on the, the wall behind me for the uh, audio listeners, I have a big poster of Kanye West or canvas behind me And Kanye West was the very first top 10 video I ever did on my channel because my friend, Mark Drager uh, or his team, I don't even know. It was a me. blog post wrote a blog post on his website uh, that that was not all about Kanye, but referenced Kanye and had a picture of Kanye at the top talking about doing inappropriate things. Uh, and I overreacted to it, you know, like you, you totally overreacted. I to totally it. I reacted to it. it. Because, so this was, this was like five was... years after the Taylor Swift thing or something, right? No, Kanye goes on five stage. years later. The post was your passion does not give you a right to be rude. Like the idea of just saying like, I'm going to tell you the truth and I'm going to be a total jerk to you. And if you get mad at me, I'm just, I'm, I have passion. Like that's, that's not an excuse was my, and, was my post. And he like used Kanye totally as overreacted because it was well, only just an image. It wasn't even, we didn't even talk about Kanye. It was just an image on the, but post. it was the head image. It was the yes, head image. It was the head and, image. And, and the, it's an overreaction just to that post, but it, it wasn't because of, I, I, you were part of my mastermind at the time and, and I wanted to break through. This is just like, that was just the final straw to the, to the, <laughs> to only, the pessimistic was, negative mark. Yeah. Just just to like, like, hey, come on, learn. man. Yeah. You should, you can learn from Kanye. My, my philosophy is you can learn from people who you hate, who you disagree with, who uh, you think are doing totally things that are totally wrong, being rude to people. It's like, great. It doesn't mean you have to go be rude to people, but you can learn from these people. And it was the final straw for me. So yes, overreaction to that one post, but not an overreaction. It was actually a gift of love from my friend, Mark Drigger. And I saw that post, which was, if, if it wasn't five years after the Kanye West, it was still it was like, years it was like removed. two years later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it like wasn't that. like it just happened, right? No, it and was so, not fresh. It was, it was an old thing we were pulling. So like, why are we still talking about this? Mark, you should be learning from this guy. He could teach you a lot. And so I, to your, to your comment about jumping on instinct and just doing something, I threw away my entire day to now make a Kanye West top 10 rules for success video. Cause Mark just created the post about being rude and doesn't give you 
whatever, whatever he said, doesn't matter. Top 10 rules for success from Kanye West. And I went and researched and I found different clips and I had other stuff planned for the day. This is not on my agenda. It was a instant reaction. And it's like, this is what I'm going to do today. And there's some stories in there like John Legend, whose name is John Stevens. And he and Kanye West were friends. And that I already found to be kind of weird. I don't understand, you know, why are they friends? John Legend seems to be like the nicest human of all time. And then Kanye is Kanye. How are they friends? But they were friends. And his name was John Stevens. And Kanye convinced him to change his name to Legend mm -hmm. because John Stevens always felt like he had an old soul, an old voice. He doesn't belong in this era. He's like from the Sinatra era. And Kanye said, you should change your name to the Legend. And John Stevens says, I can't do that. I, I, what if I don't make it? Mm. I can't call myself the legend and just never make it. <laughs> and Kanye, yeah. Kanye convinced him to go off and do it. And he did. And he changed his name to John Legend. And, and he, he did become a big name. And so even if you hate Kanye, can you believe in your friends like Kanye believed in his friends? Can you learn from that lesson and be a better friend and you show up in your relationships? Uh, and so that was the whole goal was to to show, hey, it doesn't mean that you have to love Kanye and everything that he's done. And we've all had issues and all had transgressions that maybe people don't want to model. But can you take the 5% of things that have made somebody successful and learn from that and apply it to your life? And so that was that was the goal. I made that video just for my friend Mark, just as a creative explosion. Mess up my no, whole it was more like you wanted to be like in your face, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, out of love, but it was this creative burst that was was made pretty quickly. There was no like, how are we gonna plan to do this and what is it gonna look like? And it was this is what I'm gonna do, and I will push everything else off today, and boom, the first video was made. There was no ambition to do anything more. I wanted to make the video. We're going to put it up. I'm going to show my friend Mark Drager. And, <laughs> show, and right. You're going to slap me with it because Evan's gifts often come as like a bit of a, a painful wake up call. So. And, and, and then mission accomplished. <laughs> uh, and it ended up becoming this. I don't know how many years ago that was. Five or six years ago, we made that first video. Mm, 20. Uh, 2014 or something, maybe 2015. I, so, I can look. So, I have the email. So now it's well, you can go look at the timestamp on the video, and that became an iconic part of what I did. You know, th then we did another one and another one and another one because people watched the video and left the comment and they said, "Evan, this is awesome. Can you do Dame Dash? Can you do Jeff Bezos? Can you do Oprah Winfrey?" So it, it birthed this thing that then became iconic for me. I think a lot of people associate Evan Carmichael with the top 10 rules of success series. I and know they do because when we went to Tony Robbins together, people would stop you on the street seeing, seeing your, your hoodie and they'd be, it's the top 10 guy. And I was like the top 10 guy, man. <laughs> and all of that came because of just that creative explosion from that one day of me reacting to what Mark Jager created. And but, but being willing to, clear the schedule and act on it yes being willing to clear the schedule and act on it and sometimes it leads to that's that's one of the i guess looking backwards best case scenarios there's a whole bunch of other things that that haven't worked out my rap songs you know air quotes haven't worked out but i'm still proud for the creative explosion you know like i woke up at three in the morning i had this rap song in my head I, I had to get it out of me. I had to create it. And again, I pushed off the day to record this song, to write the lyrics and to record it and give it to my editors. Like we have to launch it tonight or my Shania Twain dance challenge where <laughs> I got upset that Alex on my team didn't know the Shania Twain song that I was playing. And I was uh, befuddled. Is that a word? I don't know why I'm thinking. Befuddled is a word. Yeah, I was, I was befuddled that you were you were you were astounded yeah i was astounded befuddled beside myself that yes. my friend alex <laughs> did not know this song so i i put it to my instagram said i can't believe alex doesn't know this song and the response was nobody in my audience knew this song 
Mm. How does nobody know this song by Shania Twain? It's a great song. And so then it became my mission for the day that everybody needed to know this song. And we created Shania Twain Dance Challenge. And I uh, DM'd, video DM'd everybody who I could think of and say, I need you to make me a, a video of you dancing to this song. Right. Right. And I'm going to share it to my Instagram. But, but here's the thing. So what, what, what I struggle with in looking at you and going like, how can I model and how can I learn from what Evan's doing? And certainly anyone who's close to you and even all of your followers and everyone in your movement makers and everyone is able to allow you to do your scientific mad hat magic thing, do all the work of figuring out what works or not, and then just give it to us. And that's amazing. But most of us have to put our creative energy. So our, cre our creator hat on, like our artist hat on. And we are doing that for others because we work for them. We're doing it for others because they're our clients or we're doing it for like a company or something. And so you get to spend all day playing in your stuff for you and not for anyone else. We all spend all of our time marveling at what you do, trying to do it, but we're busy, you know, spending 60, 70, 80% of our time giving that away to other people. I, I don't know if people call you on that or not, but, but it, it seems like for you to say, Hey, come on guys, you can do what I do. We would have to stop doing all that other stuff to clear up enough space to play as much as you do. Do you think that's fair? Uh, I, no, like, I think it's, I, I think it might be a fair point. I think adopting that mindset means you lose <laughs> uh, that's going to be the name of my book i adopted this mindset and i lost <laughs> <laughs> i think that's what it is i mean um i had a i, I was doing my league of legends live stream and it was another a bizarre thing that you do you live stream you playing video games and answer business questions <laughs> and now i made my first kind of angel investment into into a business called the Queens Collective, which supports women in, in gaming. And strategically, uh, if I think forward, it's genius. Gaming <laughs> is not going anywhere. Like gaming is only gonna continue to explode. League of Legends is one of the biggest games in the world. It puts me at the forefront of culture because music isn't my thing. I don't know the latest songs coming up, but I'm deep into League of Legends and I can, I can stay relevant in culture and be the business guy entrepreneur. Like it's a genius combination, but it's not a strategic move. It's a, it's a heart play that I'll find a way to make work out. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm streaming and a, a woman asked me about, she's in movie makers too. So like it's a hardcore fan of mine asked me about my schedule. What do I do on different days? And so I said, okay, well, Monday I do this and Tuesday I do this. And I laid out my schedule and, it, and to your point, you're right. I do get to create my calendar and I, and I've designed a life and a business that I used to call the no crisis business, which has been so it's crisis based for the last year. <laughs> no, it's been so default that, I don't even call it a no crisis business anymore because I don't, it, it's just become automatic mm. that we, we don't have, I don't take on bad clients. I don't take on people who need and demand my attention right away. E even um, the, the investments that I've made and the people that I'm mentoring, I've trained them how to, how to work with me so that on Monday, which is mentoring day, I will show up for you and I'll be there and be present. And we have our time together, but, don't message me throughout the week, especially on like Facebook or Hangouts, right? Because that means you're interrupting me to do something else. Even if you message me, you message me on Facebook while I was live on Instagram and I took the Facebook message also as a, as a sign to say, oh, Mark messaged me. It must be super urgent. <laughs> oh no, I don't think it was, was it? Uh, no, nah, not really. But it's also <laughs> the like, hey, don't message me unless it's urgent because you're interrupting me from doing something else. And that's part of the, the training process. But I'm explaining to her what my calendar is like. And she said, oh, that's great, but it doesn't work for um, a single mother. And yeah, as soon you, as you soon gotta, as you take, yeah. But you got to go to school. You got to make the lunches and the kids and all of that stuff. And yeah. As soon as you adopt the mindset that doesn't work for me, you've lost. Hmm. 
the correct approach is how can I make this work for me? And this is somebody who's hardcore in my audience. She's part of my my movement makers program. She's she's in it. She she wants to grow. She wants to get better. It's not some troll hater who's coming and just right. you know wants to spew negativity. The trick is to ask yourself, how can I make this work for me? How can I make this work for me? And it might not be the way that I'm doing it right now, right? Comparing where you're at right now to where I'm at right now is almost always a losing game because then you feel like it's impossible. If you want to be a great speaker and you compare yourself to Les Brown right now, it's a losing game. You're never going to get there, right? I mean, it's just so far away. It feels impossible. So you don't start. The trick is how do I start? So being a single mother, great. You can't just create Mondays to be your mentoring day or Tuesdays to be your YouTube day. You don't have the entire day to do that, but you can create some time in your calendar. The problem is you're still not being consistent on the things that you say are important to you. And so we had to, we live coach work through that. And it, at, it came down to just a, a, a set of limiting beliefs that we had to break through. And we did right here That's... on the live stream. So, so you're right to say, you may not, you, you may not be able to right now switch to what I'm doing because you've built a crisis business. You've built a reactionary business and a reactionary life, and you haven't trained the people around you how to treat you. There's a lot of work that has to get done to make that happen. And you can start down that journey, down that path to start to create it. But as soon as you say, well, that's easy for you, but you don't understand me, you've lost. Like, that is the I think that's that where lost. I think that's where almost all of us uh, sit. I agree. Because you know what it is? Um, so this is a really silly example, but when I decided to start going to the gym, um, I was like, okay, I'm going to go to OTF. And I look at the classes and I was like, oh, the, the local one is at 5.30. The one near my office is at 7. So I can't get up crazy early. So I guess I got to go to the 7 o'clock one, but then I'm not done the workout till 8. And then now I'm showering and going to the office and now it's 8.30 or 9. And it feels like it's wasting the entire morning. I just wish that there was a class that was slightly earlier that I could get to. And then it hit me one day where I was like, well, well why can't I go to the local 531? <laughs> I was like, why can't I? And I never even stopped to ask myself, why can't I? And then I was like, oh, I just have to get up at 445. Well, what do I have to do to get up at 445? Oh, I just got to go to bed at 10 o'clock. Oh, I can do that. And then it was, it was solved. But for three months, I was like, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. And it was just me saying, well, what needs to happen to make this happen? And, and kind of figuring that out. This but, is why I think lack of belief is the world's biggest problem. It's what I wake up every day trying to solve. It's switching the intonation. It's even the same words. When, when people give advice or when you're looking at somebody and you're looking at how they did it, a lot of times the, response, the, the default thinking or, or vocalization is, well, how am I supposed to do that? And already the, the tone, you've lost. Hmm. You're not even, you've just lost by how you're asking the question. You got to turn how am I supposed to do that into how am I supposed to do that? Like same words, different belief. <laughs> and with a different belief, you can actually go off and start making your journey down. I think um, a lot of, a lot of the people today are saying, don't compare yourself to others. Don't compare yourself to others. Don't care. I think it's actually great to compare yourself to others. Come, do you? I do. You, you don't like playing on the dark side, man, do you? I, no, 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 not, not for that. I, I use it as a source of inspiration. Oh, okay. I look at a young Les Brown and say, that's what's possible. And I think a lot of people do that. It's, it's the classic story of the, the four minute mile, right? Like mm -hmm. nobody thought it was possible. One person did it. Oh, now it's possible. So I can do it too. And then high school kids are breaking the four minute mile. I think okay. so many people so on that. I literally was like, I wasn't healthy. I'm going to get healthy now. I've been thinking for a year, like, I wonder what it would take for me to run a four minute mile. And if, if it's even possible. And I started watching what they're doing and everything. And I went, oh, I can't do that. And so I've never taken it any further to see if I could like, but it's not that you can't do that. It's that you're not willing to do that. And just even understanding that difference is super important. It's like I could do that. You just believe that you could do anything, but you can't do everything. So where are you going to choose to allocate your time to believe I could do that? And to do that, I'd have to do X, Y, Z. And that's totally achievable. But I don't want to do X, Y, Z because mm -hmm. I've got other priorities and other goals. And I, 
I still want to be able to do those things. So I can't do them simultaneously. And I'm okay with that. As opposed to, it seems like you're okay with everything though. Like that's, that's, that's ultimately it's like, I don't judge myself. I'm okay with that. Um, If I understand it, great. I know I'm right. If I don't understand it, awesome. I'm, I'm okay with that. Like you didn't always used to be this way, but it seems like you've achieved some kind of guru level or not guru, but like, um, what's the, what's the person in the, the wise person in India is, you know, kind of stance in terms of just being okay with everything. It's because when you can switch your identity to the effort instead of the results, you become a lot happier. And that is the exact quote why we started the Something to Proof podcast. Because one day you mentioned that, and then we got on a live stream, and then you started yelling at me and realized, hey, I can yell at Mark every week, it seems. <laughs> the Something to Proof podcast that, that we started, I guess, two years ago or so, mm-hmm. that idea came to me in the desert. In mm-hmm. another I said, snap idea, you believe yeah, we started idea, this by like, hey, I've got a vision. I got a bit. I was driving through Texas on my way to New Mexico on my tour across the U.S., and I got this idea that I got two ideas in that car ride. One was to, was to start a podcast with my friend Mark Trigger. Who here's the thing: you had already been thinking about a podcast with me for two or three years. Two or three years. And I only mentioned it once or twice because I didn't have the courage to say like, hey, man, we should do this. And then just hear you be like, no, I'm not. like when you talked about that, am I willing to do the X, Y, Z? I mean, you're, you're pretty cold sometimes with like, yeah, that's cool. But no, I'm not going to do that, man. That's not cold. No, no, no. But, <laughs> but that's, that's what I mean. If you can only take feedback when it's so nicely packaged, like Mark, oh my God, you're thank such you. an amazing thank friend. Thank you for reaching out. Yeah, thank you for me. thinking this about me. Amazing. Oh, right now is not the time. But I, I'm going to give you an $8,000 flower bouquet because <laughs> I feel so much love for you. But you know what? I don't want to do this. Like, it's not like, Mark, I hate your face. Don't ever ask me this again. You know, unless you're trying to give me some sans serif fonts or serif fonts. Or <laughs> serif fonts. You're like, no serif fonts for never, any bread ever. Inside never joke. give me any serif fonts. We weren't going to do inside any jokes inside this, jokes. So. I know, but it came up and I had to do it. Yeah, okay. I had to do it at least. Um, so yeah, I can say, no, I don't want to do that. But, but that's the thing. Your self identity is tied to getting the yes from the other person and their opinions and their judgment that then if they say no, it's crushing. So then you yeah. don't ask Yeah. where for me it's, and not a hundred percent, but this is where I'm, I'm I every day gain like a half a percent and moving forward is I'm proud for doing the attempt. So I had this idea to start a podcast with you driving in and maybe you planted it three years ago, but like it's that three year window that I want to crush because maybe you never ask at all, or or maybe it's another three years before anything even happens. So I got this idea. I tell Nina in the car, Nina, I I need to talk to Mark like right now. We need to get a hold of Mark right now. It was a Sunday afternoon at like 2 PM Eastern time. I don't know what it was, where you were in Arizona or wherever you were, but yeah, Uh, no, I'm in Texas. On okay, my way Texas. to New Mexico. There you go. And we get Mark on. Like, Mark, I want to do the podcast. I don't know what it's about. I don't know what we're going to do, but I want to do a podcast. What do you think? And you could have said, nah, I, you know, I don't have time or whatever. Like, okay, cool. No problem. I wouldn't have fought for it. I wouldn't have forced it. Like, I did my part. I put it out there. And I don't have time for a podcast. I'm, I just left on my tour. I'm doing a new city every four days. I'm speaking. We're traveling. Like, I'm behind on everything. And now I'm going to do a podcast. Like, logically, it makes zero sense. But Mark said yes. It's like, okay. So I guess when you get back, we'll do it. We'll figure out the format. Like, when I get back. Yeah, yeah. This is this is fe- this is February, and you get back in April. So I'm yeah. like, yeah, we, we'll we'll figure it out, and we'll yeah, we'll make it all work for sure. Like, no, no, no not when we get back, and yeah. and then you're like, well, when when are we gonna do it? When you want to start tonight? What do you mean? When are we gonna start? We're starting. Well, no, tonight. it wasn't even tonight. It was just like, um, Nina, how long will it take us to drive to our destination? <laughs> I needed solid it's internet. Take, it's gonna take three hours. Okay, in three hours we'll do it. Yeah. I was like, well, what, what, are, what's the format? What, what, what are we calling it? What's the structure? Like, I don't care. We're gonna start. Like, this is the, this is the whole point. Like, you need and to create momentum. That moment, I wanted to say no, 
I was going to say no. And I realized that if I said no, my shot was done. Never going to come around again. Once in a, like when Evan reaches out and asks you something, and this is what I want to get comfortable with is like being able to ask people into something with that, like Joe, you know, Joe, who does our comments and stuff, right? Like it felt like a really big ask for me to reach out to him and say, Hey man, will you help me with this? You're so good at it. Will you volunteer your time and help me and all that stuff? It, like it took a lot of courage for me because, because I feel like I'm imposing in all these things. And I want to get comfortable being able to reach out to people, ask them for some assistance. And if they're in great, and if they're not, it's not the end of the world, but also if they're like, yeah, but not now, it's also not the end of the world. I'll just find someone else. And that's something that you're really good at. And so I recognize like, Hey, this is my shot. I have to say yes, because otherwise, if I'm like, well, how about Thursday? You're like, nah, it's okay, man. don't worry about it. <laughs> because it's still the identity is not tied to the answer. So fast forward to 2020, I'm doing my League of Legends stream and I want a co-host. Yeah, so I that I so can hard to try and make that work, man. And, and somebody can 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 look at the comments so I can focus on the gameplay. And by default, I I. I'm thinking Mark, I'm thinking Mark can't do it because it's, it's, you know, four or five days a week uh, for two hours at night during dinner time. With, yeah. With, with his kids and everything else. It's like, there's no way Mark is going to say yes, but I owe it to him to be the first person that I ask just out of respect or friendship or anything else. And to my surprise, you even said, let me think about how I could, maybe make this work. And then you came back with, can we make it half an hour later? Or can we do this? Like, sorry, Mark, like, this is the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's so funny. Cause I went to, I went to Jacqueline and I was like, I explained the opportunity, I explained the situation that with Evan, you know, when he starts his things, I said, for all I know, in two weeks, he might just be like, it's not working. It's over. So like, this isn't necessarily a forever commitment, but you know, these nights per week and my daughters do dance and soccer and all of this stuff. And, and so that's why I was just like, if we can make these tweaks, but, but you were like, no. So it's like, okay, it's not going to work. It, I really, it, there's a, there's a tight timeline in my schedule at night. I've got my evening routine. I'm not willing to bend it for Mark. Uh, and so I, you actually did a lot more than I expected you to. And uh, I think I wrote a couple of times like, Hey, this it's, don't worry about it. It's not a big, I'm not offended or anything like just, do, do what's right for you. Um, I know you weren't offended, but I saw it exactly like I saw the podcast, which is, Hey, I have an opportunity here. And, yeah. and, and I think I told you this a few weeks ago, like really I had a shift in, in, in my thinking in terms of the people who reach out to me and who are friendly with me. It's, I always kind of saw it as an obligation and I use the word burden, but that's like, an, that's the feeling word. I know it's not really a burden. It just kind of feels that way. Cause I'm carrying a lot of people's worries and weight and all of that stuff. Um, and then I realized, I was like, oh, these are gifts. These are gifts and opportunities that we're being granted that we can choose to take or not take. But, you know, the, the top 10 rules to success with Kanye was, you know, you doing that to shove it in my face was a gift you were trying to give me. And it led to something really cool. And that's something that kind of sparked. And so when you come to me and you say, hey, Mark, can you figure out a way to give me four evenings per week? every single week um i was just like okay this is a gift how how can i figure out a way to make this work um and, yeah. and so so it didn't work i mean with mark and that's fine and listen to mark's point in my head this this is now my next hundred thousand subscriber channel right i mean we've got three thousand subscribers now that's my next hundred k channel um but i could stop in two weeks you know like if i don't like it anymore sorry we're moving on to something else guys and i won't i won't judge myself for doing it because i think staying in something for too long is never the right um path for for business decisions i think with people i might be a little too loyal and stick with them because i have an uh, emotional attachment to them but for business ideas like well, let's move on um so i got somebody else we got zanda man who's in and he's crushing it and i haven't thought about mark since you know i mean it's just like crushing, <laughs> <it hurts>. crushing. <laughs> Fine. but that but that's what it is like if you just the mindset that there's it's not the right fit and there's somebody else who's gonna do it and i didn't have anybody lined up it wasn't like zan already said yes 
And I now I need to like push Mark away or just make it really uncomfortable for him. So he doesn't want to join or something. Right. I went to Mark. I had no other options. Uh, I didn't expect him to say yes, but I, I wanted to give him at least a first shot because he deserved that. And then he said, no, I was like, okay, great. Who's next. And, and I think that day or the next day, yeah, like within an hour, it's like done approved. Next, thank Zane you. Gone man, happening. Like, <laughs> Zan writes back. This is a tremendous honor. Thank you for thinking of me. All right. When do we start tonight? Let's go. And if Zan said no, it would have been somebody else. And, and see, it's, it's funny though, because when you asked me in the way that I laid it out to Jacqueline, I was like, okay, one, <laughs> I, I need, I need practice. So <laughs> show up two hours per day, every single day. I mean, just amazing. Uh, two, uh, you know, I think that with this practice, I'm going to be able to develop certain skills because I see myself one day, like, you know, I, I was telling someone this when I used to listen to talk radio, I couldn't help but feel that I would be better as the host on the radio than listening to the radio. And so it's like, okay, cool. Evan does this thing with Q and a and blah, blah, blah. And you're running traffic and you're the host and you're funny and you're making jokes. I need to get better at this because I don't know if in two or three years, I won't be doing that somewhere or something. I just imagine that that is going to happen. Uh, but, yeah, and, and it, and it, and it kind of irks me that I, that I don't get to help you out more. <laughs> yeah. I mean, part of why I, I message you too, just not out of loyalty, but I think it's also, it's perfectly aligned with what you want to become and where you want to go. And if it was any other time during the day, it would have been a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And it's my restrictive schedule that kind of, but see, you're comfortable with that. And that's like, like it, it really did not sit well with Jacqueline when, when I was like, when we worked to try and make it work and make it work and make it work. And I was like, yeah, Evan won't move it back half an hour. Cause it starts to bump into time, you know, with his family and all of these things. And she's like, he won't do that. You just, you just agreed to make all of these changes and he won't do that. And that is um, perfect. That perfectly describes or articulates your confidence and certainty and comfort in terms of like, this is what I'm going to do. Help me. But if you don't, that's cool. And no, I'm not going to change in that way. And I feel, and I think a lot of us feel that we have to change to ease others or, you know, like from Jacqueline's point of view, we are going to make all of these significant changes and you're not willing to budge on 30 minutes. Um, uh, I want to be more like you in that regard. And, I don't know how to do that without feeling like a total jackass, honestly. Well, I think you got to split that up between feeling like a jackass because I don't feel like a jackass. And I know I don't want to feel like a jackass either. But, but like as long as the intention is positive, I think it's it's in the delivery. I think you can over communicate. I think you can show love. I think if you're even worried about it, we've had enough history that. Uh, you know, if you, if you were so sad about it or something, I'm like, Mark, you'll be fine. You know, it's just, I wouldn't spend a, a ton of time on it because we spend so much time together. But if it was, if it was Zane, the man, for example, who I don't have as much context with, who is my co-host now, but I haven't known for 15 years and he couldn't make it. Um, he had a similar thing where he picks up his wife at six 30 mm. every night. Right. And so he joins my he would join my stream and then lead to pick up his wife and then come back. And I said, I know you I know you got to pick up your wife. Um, so, you know, if it doesn't fit, that's fine. He's like, no, she'll find her way her own way home. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> Is, and again, like it's not that he's a bad husband. He's doing lots of other things for her. It's supporting each other's dreams. Right. Like this is a big oh, step up, big opportunity so for him though. supporting each other's dreams so she could just see it as now I don't get, I, now I got to come home by myself or whatever, but it's, you have to explain it to your spouse that, Hey, this is something that really helps me. This is an opportunity that I wouldn't get otherwise, or it's going to, I might not get another one for five years or something as I grow. Mm -hmm. And, and then what do you do to match it? Like if you're going to move your, your stuff around with your kids and your wife to make this thing work, what are you going to do to give, to them so it doesn't seem it's just a sacrifice like i'm going to take every lunch break now to be with you and have family lunch time together because i'm doing this thing you know at night right like that has to be the 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 give and take um and honestly you know on your side that should have been part of it with jacqueline so she's not pissed that 
won't even move it half an hour. Like she feels like she's losing a lot. She doesn't gain anything as opposed to feeling, no, I, I gained this over here. And we get to support my husband and his dreams of what he's trying to do. She, right? she was there. She was there in, until I was like, yeah, it, it didn't quite line up and work, work out. So, <laughs> so if, if Zan couldn't make it and he felt terrible about it, I would have spent time to, to make him feel better. Mm. Right. That, don't worry about it, man. Like I'll, I'll keep thinking about you for other opportunities. This, this isn't the biggest deal in the world. I love you. You've got so much ahead of you, like make him feel good. So he doesn't feel like not even that I'm a jackass. That's not even what I'm no, thinking. No, no, no. I, I don't think you're a jackass. No, I, no, no, said, you, I can't help you, but no, no. feel like one. Dude, that's when... what I'm explaining. Okay. Cause I'm being the guy. I don't mm -hmm. feel like a jackass. I don't, I don't want him to feel like I'm being a jackass or me feeling like a jackass the way to the way through it is over communication empathy and love to make him feel like it's not the end of the world like he'll still be okay like he can still go do his mission and still make his content and still continue to pursue his dream and that he didn't just miss out on the greatest opportunity of his life yeah. right so lower the lower the like the in my head it's like <laughs> this is the greatest thing of all time but not not pitching it that way because I don't want him to feel, you know, like he's being left out. Yeah. Um, so, so you just you just touched on something as well, which is you have this amazing ability to think that you are the greatest, most awesome, extraordinary, smartest, most amazing person on earth. And at the same time, you're like, I'm an idiot. I'm only good at these three things. Um, and and I don't know how you're able. I I move between those two things as well but on one i'm like way too overconfident and egotistical it seems to me and then on the other one i'm more hopeless than anything but for you it's like this like i'm the greatest and i know that i'm an idiot and i don't know how you are able to hold those two things together without well the foundation is still back to the seems like the, the theme of this show which is tying the self-worth to the effort right that Every time I try something difficult or we do hard things, every time I try something hard, I, I constantly reward myself to say, I tried that. I tried that. I tried that. Good job, Evan. Good job. You're amazing. Keep going. Keep going. It's like, but, I'm but constantly- But do you fail? Or in, uh, this, in this spectrum of, like, do you lose? Do you fail? Um, do you actually really get scared? Or have you moved? Like, or is that 10 years ago that was you? And today it's just this spectrum of it didn't go as well as I wanted. It, you know, um, uh, it didn't work out. I've moved on. I, like, I don't see it as black and white as failure. I give myself what I need. And what that means is if I'm, if I didn't do as well as I could have and, and everything in this interview, right. I could always do better and everything I, I do, I can always do better. <laughs> and this interview and what I'm doing next and the next thing you, know, you can always do better. Right. And I think that's what we want. We want to strive. We want to grow. If you're only doing the same thing all the time, you're not, you're not happy. We want the growth. We want to be challenged. But if you lean too hard on that, then, then you feel empty and worthless and uh, afraid to take the next step and afraid to go off and start because it's so much expectation and burden that not other people put, but you put on yourself to show up and perform at that next thing. And so I will oscillate between I did a great job and I'll tell myself like when I'm, when I'm feeling amazing, like that was the, this interview with Mark was the best of all time. The immediate voice is you suck. What are you talking about? Like it's nowhere close to the best that you can do like almost instant. And then same thing on the other side of if I fail, if I, if I let myself down, if I didn't deliver, um, then it's immediately dude, you're, you're awesome. You're amazing. Cause, cause that's what you need. So when you're down, we end, but, we but tend when you're to down. How do you believe the you're awesome voice? And when you're awesome and you rocked it, I mean, I can understand the critical voice <laughs> believing that, but let's just focus on when you're done, when you're down and you're like, dude, you're, it's okay. You're good. We're like, like, why do you believe that voice? Because I, I, I remember all the things that I tried. Hmm. It's, it's all the thing. Like I tried my heart. Did I try my hardest? You know, did I try? Was this, was this a difficult thing to do, right? If I fail at something I don't care about, then you're not going to beat yourself up about it. It's when so you feel did I try my hardest though. You can't, well, 
Ooh, I was about to say really limiting self-belief. Is it possible to try your hardest at everything all the time? I would say no. So I actually don't ask that question. The question I ask is, am I proud of my effort? Okay. Am I proud of myself for the effort? Because this becomes an inside game where I think most people are not actually proud of their effort, but then share the things that they've done and post it to Instagram and get all the accolades like, oh my God, congratulations, you did that. Meanwhile, you're like, ah, that was just, that was just okay. Like I probably could have done more, but we're mm -hmm. constantly trying to share our wins to get the congratulations from other people where all that really matters is how you feel about yourself, right? The pillow test at night, you put mm -hmm. your head on the pillow. You ask yourself, are you proud of the effort you put in today? And that's what I want to try to do. And so some days, this is why like the results don't matter. It's the effort when I broke my neck in terms of like, we do hard things. My tour last year was the, probably the most difficult thing I ever did in my life. And just getting out of bed was a victory. Hmm. Just getting out of bed and not falling over uh, was me saying, I'm so proud of myself. Like, good job. Where fast forward to now, like that is the most basic, stupidest thing of all time. So it's, it's meeting yourself where you're at, not just meeting other people where they're at and understanding that, no, this, is, this was a good effort that I put in. I'm proud of myself for what I did today. And the more days you have where you're proud of yourself for what you did today, that starts to build up the self-confidence, the self-love, the self-belief where I think we should be, uh, I think we should all be harder on ourselves. Like I think we should be more critical. I think we should take more uh, negative feedback to try to get better, but we can't because we're already on the verge of depression and suicide. And like any little thing triggers people it's because it's a lack of self-love. Hmm. So the inner voice is me saying, you're amazing. This is amazing. I'm about to crush today. We're going to create something insane. Uh, I'm the best of all time. And then the outer voice is the, I suck. Like, Mark, tell me why I suck. Tell me, tell me why I'm just the worst at this of all time. And do, I can hear what people, you're saying. Do people actually like, have you hit a point now in your career or where you just get accolades and very few people are in a position to actually. So I, I say this because I know for years you, you very consciously model and take advice from those who you believe have something to give. So if, if I've built a $10 million YouTube channel or a 10 million sub YouTube channel, you're probably gonna take my advice. Um, right now, you're not gonna take my advice. Um, and so, so you're very comfortable with that, but are you at the point where people are actually giving you the critical feedback that you need or the further you go, are your, is there diminishing returns on that? Well, the, I see this as a life game, not just, a, you know, in life, there's lots of things that I need to learn and get better at mm -hmm. that many people can teach me, you know, how to install a light fixture. I'm a, I'm a 40 year old man. Can we, can and, we pick harder examples and, than that and, for this podcast? Well, but, no, please? but this is good. Like, listen, for this is, this is real life. I'm a 40 year old man and I changed my first light fixture, not light bulb, but like replace the fixture up yeah. until that point. I had my friend, Mark Drager, or my dad, or somebody else come and change the light. And I have literally driven to your house in a snowstorm. To from from Mark lives in cow country to come here. Twice, because I put it up, and then you didn't like it. We returned it, and we put the next one up. <laughs> it was the wrong color temperature. <laughs> uh, and so that was, that was part um, limiting belief of, I can't do that. And part, I don't want to spend the time to learn how to do that. Cause I'm focused on, I don't stuff. believe you when you say limiting belief at all. Like I, like, I know that you say this, I just don't believe you. I, it's, it's a spectrum. Think, it's, I think it's, that you believe that you can do anything if you just had the right amount of time and knowledge. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but, but the limiting belief for me was that it was not that I couldn't do it is that it's more difficult than it actually is. Okay. Cause it's very, that it would take me longer than, than, than it it's, actually would. Like, I think a lot of things that we're unsure of and scared of, starting a YouTube channel, starting a podcast, you think it's going to be impossible. And then like, Oh, like I made my first video. It doesn't, it's not actually that bad once you get momentum. So I, I researched, like, pulled up a YouTube video, how to change the light. 
I didn't have the little tool that tracks whether the electricity was on or off. So uh, I so thought did, it was off. You did the glove test, right? You were like, you turned it off and you're like, ah, did I get electrocuted? I, I took my wife's leather glove because it was super tight and fit and I could still kind of move my fingers around. And yeah, and I, I mean, you can't see it here, but I, I changed my light fixture by myself as a 40 year old man for the first time and realized, oh, it's not actually that hard, you know? But then I started painting my office and my edge work sucks and realized, wow, that's actually harder than I thought. I got all this confidence like, hey, I could do anything now. Let's go, let's start, let's start changing the floors and then. But anyway. you can fix your edge work, you know that, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I can. It, now that's actually harder than I thought it would be. But I gotta. I'm looking at researching tools on Amazon. No, and... no, no. Tool, no tools. No, no. Two inch brush. Two inch brush. Get a really expensive brush, and then what you do is you place your hand here, and all you have is paint on the tip, and you just roll your hand, and okay. then you move it, and you roll your hand, and they'll give you a nice crisp edge. All right, I got it. So, you know, you can't really see it, but that wall. Is I'm messy. pointing to my old audio listeners. I got a black wall and a red wall, and the in the in the crease there is, is a little challenging. It's not, it's not quite how I'd like it. You can't see it from this angle, but um, so it depends like with something like that, with, with changing a light fixture, how many people can change a light fixture? I mean, a good percentage of the population, right? Adult population, uh, a lot of people. So can I learn from them? Yeah. Like I can learn a lot pretty easily from those people on the things that I, on something like that on YouTube it's getting fewer and fewer, right? Like as you get higher and higher up in whatever your area of expertise is, there's fewer and fewer people who can teach you, who can mentor you, who can actually guide you. Um, just like anything else, you know, if you're, if you're doing, if Mark Drake is an expert at brand design, then as he gets better at it, he's not going to take as much advice from other people. Hmm. So um, that being said, I mean, I think, having a beginner's mind is still helpful. Um, I would still love for someone to beat my thumbnails. What will we'll get at least one a day on Instagram, people DMing me to say, Hey, I think I can, I'm a thumbnail designer. I'd love to help you with your YouTube channel. <laughs> so, okay. What do you got? Like, give me, give me a thumbnail and we'll test it. And if it works, I have 7,000 thumbnails for you to do. <laughs> and, has it worked yet? Nobody's beat my thumbnails. Right. But I still, that's still the default response now. And then they submit something. It's got to look half decent. If it, I mean, I guess there's some level of, <laughs> if it looks like a kid drew it, then I probably wouldn't test it. But I think I've tested what everybody have, has done and, and nobody's been able to beat it yet, but I'm still open to it. There's just fewer people who are listening to YouTube advice on yeah, because because you get good at it. I think and I think that's I think that's fine. I think that's normal. Um, but for people kind of calling me out, I think it depends on the relationship. If I were to say, Mark, tell me why I suck. You already you already know the you already know the shtick. Um, you know, I just don't know if you would. I don't know if you would listen. Like, I think over the last year, there's two or three areas in your business where I've really been like, oh, Evan's just not great at this. Um, and, and I think it, it hurts them a little bit. And, but at the same time, if I approach you, you'd go like, yeah, like I, I know. And, and that's cool. I'm, I'm just busy focused on this other stuff. Like I'm not good at this because it doesn't matter that much to me. And if it yeah. mattered to me, I'd become good at it. And so that mindset is really, really cool. But at the same time, it gives someone like you, or if I were to adopt it or whatever, a lot of room to talk our way out of critical feedback or even drive, like you're self-driven. So it's great to say like, I love myself. I, I'm amazing. And, and teach me, um, do, you know, pillow test at the end of the day, am I proud of the effort today? But if you're not quite as self-driven, then, then there are, you might line up eight days in a row where you're not proud of yourself at the end of the day, because you just feel like you're falling so short of your potential or, um, or, or the effort you feel like you should put in or what you think other people are putting in. Um, and so I always like to challenge you on it just because it's like, when you talk about being afraid or fear, it doesn't seem like you're as afraid or fearful as other people are. When you talk about beating yourself up, it doesn't seem to be as severe or limiting as everyone else seems to deal with. And so it just doesn't, 
Yeah, it, it's it not real. though. It's not. Well, it's not that it's not real. It's not because I don't pile on. Because when I'm feeling down, I don't pile on myself and make my feel make myself feel worse. I'll I'll tell myself that I did, I put in a good effort, and I'm and all these other things that I've done that I'm grateful and proud of. Hmm. Where most people, when they they get a loss, they pound themselves more for the loss. Yeah. Yeah, they'll say, well, this just proves that those other 14 things that I did wrong are. Yeah, so uh, it's when I'm up, it's when I'm, when I cross 3 million subscribers on YouTube or whatever the next milestone is, okay, like we're just starting, like this sucks. This is not, this is nowhere close. So it's, it's never the extreme low or even the extreme high because once I'm there, it's like, okay, how can I do better? What's next is there's, there's tons of room for improvement. I'm not, I'm not resting here. This isn't where we stop. Like, let's keep going. Um, uh, Tess, our, our psychologist friend encouraged me to celebrate more. She's like, why don't you celebrate more? Um, and like, I celebrate all the time. Like I celebrate my life. I celebrate my effort. It's like, no, like when you hit a milestone, you should celebrate it. But that's results. That's I don't care about that. I care about what I'm doing every day. It's like you need to celebrate. Like, okay, fine. I was I was coming up across two million YouTube subscribers, and like, okay, you know what? McDonald's, I think, and got some two breakfast? million. No, we went. We went to. I went Tim to get Hortons? a donut. Oh god. Okay. We went to Tim Hortons and got a special donut to celebrate crossing two million. And uh, and listen, I'll uh, we'll try it. I'll give it a shot. And then I got my donut. Took took like. A, half the day off or something and he's like this is stupid i, I want to get back <laughs> to work like can i work can we get back to work we're doing something here that's important and it just feels right and it's like you're trying on the hat and i'm willing to try on the hat and if it doesn't fit then you throw it off and and just keep moving forward um so yeah so i, I don't like celebrating the any a lot of things though i mean we've talked about birthdays we've talked about father's day or mother's day or um christmas like like last year you guys you guys took what seven hours off or something like you worked on christmas until until your son flew in um i, I can recall you know we have but it's National, not work which gets us back to the point where i made earlier where where we all look at what you have been able to build over the last what 12 years maybe you've been on this you, you've been focused on this and we just go like, oh man, we want your outcome, but we but we're not in your structure, and we don't even know how to get to your structure. Well, and my structure is for me. I've designed my structure for me. Like you may not want my structure, but you have to. You can learn from it. Like you trying on this hoodie is not going to fit you perfectly. It might. So, I might be your size now. I'm I'm a medium now. But 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 this is the thing. Like you're never the size. It's never going to fit you perfectly. There's something always going to feel off. So that's why you pull from different things from different people. It's mm -hmm. why back to the Kanye story at the beginning, you can hate him, but there's 5% that you can learn from him to make you better. And so you're and constantly I, I, taking I will admit pieces. that I've come around on Kanye quite a bit over the last few years. It's great. It's why, why I push so hard on making that video. It's like Mark <laughs> needs to learn this. <laughs> Do you think um, that you... So, so you're, you're, you're busy thinking you're awesome. You're busy forgiving yourself when you're down. Do you think that you dream big enough? This is still an area of growth. Um, I, I, I think it's the world's biggest problem. You know, I think even me saying that five years ago would have been seemed too crazy. Uh, I remember when I first even came up with believe, I felt like it was way too big. Like, who am I to be the believe guy? You know, there's who so many. Who am people. I? That question, man, does that yeah. kill that? That slows more people down than probably anything else. Yeah. And I address that in, in your one word, mm -hmm. right? So that's an ongoing Sorry. thing. And this is why I think comparison is fantastic because when I, I think someone like Elon Musk is one of the best at it, where he's thinking about the backup plan for the planet. He wants to go to Mars. Yes, because he loves space travel and adventure when he was young, the books and the comics and all that. But, but he's concerned that the Earth is going to have some kind of extinction event and there's nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. 
So we need to be able to go to Mars. We need to be ready. Yeah. It's like, that's crazy. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I've got this big mission and what I'm working on or what I'm trying to do for, you know, the city or whatever. Um, that's just on a whole other scale. And so that's where, that's where the comparison I think is fantastic to say, holy cow, that's what's possible. Not, oh my God, I could never think big like Elon Musk. Like he's just a freak and that's not achievable for anybody else. Right. It's, it's to kick yourself forward, not down. That's the comparison. I think without comparison, you stay stuck. I think without knowing what's possible, you stay doing the exact same thing that you're doing. Most people use comparison to make them feel bad about all the things that they are terrible at and they'll never get there. I use comparison to say, and in my best moments, not 100% of the time, but in my best moments of, wow, that's what's possible. Okay, with effort and dedication, hard work, I can, I can at least get better than where I'm at now. Maybe you never become the Elon Musk, but you can get a heck of a lot better of an Evan Carmichael or Mark Jager than where you're at right now. And without that, it, that source of inspiration, you stay where you are. You stay being this big fish in this tiny pond and then ultimately end up hating and regretting your entire life. So what are the things that, what are the things that disappoint you the most? One of the things that disappointed me the most, probably um, when the, the funny, the answer that came into my head was people. And then the right answer right after that was what that means about me. So when somebody uh, that I see is why I push so hard on people around me, whether they're close, you know, friends or just somebody that I'm spending time with on Instagram live and as soon as I can see their potential and then I push them towards doing something and then they let themselves down, they don't do the work. They don't follow through. They're not as good as they uh, thought they were. You know, they just don't do the action. That always makes me feel terrible. And the deeper reason underneath is because I didn't do enough to make that happen. Like I let them down somehow in that process, yeah. which is probably why I got so good at being able to deal with people and figure out problems and push them because of the deep pain of seeing somebody with a lot of potential and not helping them kind of break through to make it happen. So, yeah. So seeing, seeing somebody um, that I see a ton of potential in and then seeing them a week later, a year later, a day later, and they haven't done the thing super disappoints me because it, means for me that I failed them. Disappointing people is my biggest fear. And how often do you disappoint yourself? Not so often. Um, maybe so as because long as, as long as you're not feeling like you're disappointing someone by not showing up and giving them what they need. And the reason I ask this is because I, I find it very easy for me to use my superpowers on others and not on myself. And everything we've been talking about today are, are really just swimming around your superpowers and what you're so good at. And I'm wondering how you internalize that yourself. If it's me, I'm, I mostly bounce out of it, right? Like when I'm low, I'll bounce myself out of it. There's very few moments where I get overwhelmed and I can't handle it. What does it. low Evan look like? I, I don't even know if maybe i've seen you maybe i haven't seen you i don't know like no like it very like? Uh, um yesterday you know i woke up at five nina had a rough night um it woke me up a bunch of times so we went to bed late i woke up at five i had very little energy um and i had a, i had a full day and and from you know, five in the morning until we had our thing until we finished at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. Then I still had to take the dogs out and do my 10 questions with Evan and all this stuff. And so, um, especially as the day got to an end, uh, I was losing energy. Um, even before we did our podcast, something to prove yesterday, I, I was crashing and Nina's like, do you want to take a 15 minute nap? Like, no, I got, I got Mark coming up. I'll wake you up. I have 15 minutes, not going to do anything. So I'll, I'll just, I'll just go. And, and it, in, even in saying that I start to it's like, 
dude, you're so awesome. <laughs> you're so awesome. Everyone else would take a nap. I pushed. Through yeah, that's it. It's like you're so amazing. Like it's a little voice. It's the it's the subconscious voice that just keeps coming back. I'm I'm talking to myself always. So why journaling doesn't do anything for me because I'm always talking to myself. And so there's very few moments where I get overwhelmed and I can't handle it. Um, the most recent one is probably when I was on my tour last year and I broke my neck and I got, I'm in the hospital and all, all of leading up to that, talking about like, we do hard things, you know, the, the, I, I pass out or break my neck in two spots, compress my spine, have a concussion. I wake up in a pool of blood and my wife crying because I, I went unconscious. I don't know what's going on. Right. The paramedics come uh, and, and I start losing circulation in my hands and my arms and they think I'm having a heart attack and they're all stressing out. And in my head, I'm telling myself I am the greatest patient of all time because I'm so right. calm. I'm explaining this. They're like, can you feel, can you pull? And the guy, oh, I can't feel my left hand anymore, guys. I can't feel my left arm. I can't feel my right hand, my right Meanwhile, arm. Meanwhile, you're just in shock, but but it's cool that it's cool that you internalize but that. I'm in shock or whatever. But, ever. <laughs> but even in my shock, maybe this is like how deep and ingrained it is. In my shock, I'm telling myself, these guys must think I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Even like, though what a pleasure, no, like what a gift I'm giving these guys to come and, and work with me when they could be working with someone else. No, not, not that, not, not that, not that work with me. Cause I'm so amazing that, that, I, that we're co-creating here, right? That like <laughs> I, in my head, I'm thinking all of these, anybody else in my situation, if you lose feeling in both your arms and, and hands, most people would be freaking out, Right. Like, even if you ask me mentally, if you, if I didn't actually experience it, I would probably be freaking out, which doesn't make the life easier for the, the paramedics who are here trying to help you. Right. And so internally, I'm saying, I'm amazed. This is so amazing <laughs> right now. Right. Is this not amazing to myself? I would, but again, I would never say that out loud because of how it gets interpreted. Uh, maybe, maybe if you were there or Nina or whatever, right. People who kind of know me by now, but to strangers never. Um, and then all throughout that whole hospital process, like that day, they didn't know what was wrong with me. They didn't know if I was having a heart attack or whatever. Um, uh, you know, we go and I get staples in my head and all this stuff concussion. Like I can barely process things. I'm not thinking clearly the lights are like freaking me out and they have to have bright lights to see what's going on and clean stuff up. And if you have a concussion, bright lights are like, the worst thing ever. Um, they want to, we do MRIs and we do, I don't know, put me in all sorts of machines. They want to put me on all these drugs that are making me loopy. And I'm like, Hey, can we do no drugs? Like no drugs. Like, yeah. Can I just, do I need the drugs? Cause I can't think properly. Like, mm -hmm. but it hurts. It's like, well, let's see how, like, is it bad for me to not have the drugs, right? Like, is it, is it helping me in some way? It's like, no, it just release the pain. It's like, okay, let me see if I can do it without the drugs. And so then we went no drugs. Um, and I wanted, to, I wanted to leave the next day. I wanted to leave that night and then the next day host at my ear. All the <laughs> and then host. That we canceled have, on, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what's going on in my head. I Come said I was going to go live. hospital room, everyone. I'm going to go. Yeah. I'm going to walk at... through. If your heart is pumping, you got to do it. <laughs> so maybe I'm still in shock or maybe that's just, you know, it wore off and it's just who I am. I had a goal to go live on Instagram every day. And so we, we went live from the hospital, you know, uh, on Instagram for like five minutes. Cause I couldn't look at the screen without getting super dizzy and nauseous. Um, so, you know, all of that. And I left the next day where they wanted to keep me for uh, at least a couple of weeks and just like I measure my progress and put me in a, the neck brace or whatever. And, and to Mark's credit, he said, I keep the neck. He suggested I keep the neck brace. So I've got them both here. Yeah, only because Evan is so. I was gonna, like, I was gonna, focused. I was gonna throw these away. I know, throw, throw them away. I'm like, dude, yeah. man, those are like. I'm gonna keep this. So this I wore for for 50 days, and there's like duct tape on it and stuff to keep it together. And this was the last 10 days or so. If and anyone wants to see how, how what Evan really looked like, I mean, I, there's lots of content on his channel. But if you go backwards on my YouTube channel. Um, there's a black and white video with a thumbnail of Evan standing with his brace where f he basically just yelled at me for 
it's a 10 minute video, but it was an hour and a half. Okay. So I had to wear this for, for, I could take it off for 10 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. So 60 days I wore this, you sleep in it, everything except for 10 minutes where you have a shower and you take it off and you're like as stable as possible because nothing's supporting your neck. And then you put it right back on. And so through all of that, it was massively painful. You know, multiple areas in my body were just on fire all the time. I couldn't get up and out of bed without um, getting dizzy and, and having to ask Nina for help to go to the bathroom was a big, you know, hurdle for me to get over just relying on other people. So all of this pain and all this stuff was, I was dealing with it. And like, and, and most through most of it, I'm telling myself, I'm amazing. This is great. I'm going to get to this. This is insanely awesome. But when I got discharged, uh, the next day I passed the concussion test that, that Donald Trump had to pass, uh, or the, like the cognitive test or whatever. So we passed that and they let me go and we get to the, um, garage and we had this giant suburban, right? So it's this, this big truck that I had to get in and, um, I couldn't drive. I mean, I'm not allowed now. I can't drive for the rest of the tour. Nina and tiny little Nina has got to drive this <laughs> suburban <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> And, um, I was like, okay, let's go. Like, let, wh- you want to, you want to explore the city today? What are we going to do today? <laughs> like, it's great. I get to see the sun. And then we get to the car and I try to get in and I can't get in. And I, I put one leg in and then I, I couldn't get in. It, it just hurt too much. When I, when I pushed off my back leg, my whole spine just lit up. Like I just, I just froze the air out of your, out of your everything. I, I couldn't get in, Yeah, but then I also couldn't come back out. So I'm stuck with like one inch of mobility where it just, uh, I could move and not feel pain, but forward was insane pain back was insane pain. And now I'm starting to get tired because I'm trying to hold myself up and it's just all pain. Nina's trying to push me <laughs> from my butt You're cheek right. to like, yeah, to just to get in. Um, and, and then I just start crying because I get so overwhelmed that I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I can't go forward. I can't go back. Uh, I'm not talking to myself anymore to say, Hey, Evan, dude, you're crushing this. <laughs> and I'd start crying and, uh, I, I mean, crying now is, you know, it's usually a happy moment or a sad moment, but like overwhelmed out of control. I, I just haven't felt that for a long, long time. I can't remember the last one before that. And Nina didn't know what to do because she hasn't seen me cry out of frustration. And she's worried that I'm in, you know, crazy pain. Um, and eventually we get one push moment that I live, she pushes and I get in and then we just like, okay, don't move. Don't like, just let me sit here for 10 minutes. Cause I, I'm, in so much pain and then I, I come back down and get back to normal, but through like having a potential heart attack and all that, like, I'm amazing. It's great. But in that moment I was, I just lost complete control and I couldn't, I, I wasn't even trying to talk to myself. The voice was gone. Um, I wasn't piling on myself even harder, but I was just, it was the most painful moment of my life. I think, um, and I look back on that and I'm, I'm actually super grateful that you told me to keep these because this wasn't even a thought for me. I'm not a super sentimental guy. I don't like hoard stuff and keep stuff from all these different eras. Um, and when you said it initially, like, uh, okay, I don't know, I guess, because if I throw it away, then there's no other option. But okay, I'll, um, I wasn't even 100% sold on keeping it. But, <laughs> but this I'll, is what I mean when I say like Evan chooses who he wants to take advice from. Yeah, but like, I whatever, appreciate like, that you took my advice because when I first said it, you were like, I don't know. I don't really feel, but, but I, I think, okay, what, what, I mean, what's the worst? I, I hold on to it for two weeks and then I throw it away. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, I'll keep it. I'll keep and then, it. and then a year later, I'm like, Hey man, where's that neck brace? And you're like, Oh, I threw that out a long time ago. Yeah. 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 I mean, if it doesn't, it's a point, maybe it serves me. It wasn't something that I would normally do, but okay, let's give it a shot. And, and now I'm super grateful because I'll look at these every now and then and realize I, I have a hard time imagining that I, that I went through that. Like, this is a reminder that, holy cow, all of that stuff that I went through, whatever difficult thing I'm thinking about now that feels impossible. Are you kidding me? Look what freaking you went through. When, when we were looking at doing our tour this year before it got canceled, um, 
I remember thinking, oh my God, are we going to do 90 days on the road? That seems crazy. 90 days in 20, 20, 20 cities or something. That's like, who does that? Meanwhile, like I already did it with a broken neck. (laughs) Yeah. And we went to San Diego and back, right? Like this new trip would be less just going down the East coast instead of going out to San Diego and back. And I broke my neck and all of this stuff. And now we'd have more people. And I just forgot. Right. And so um, having that, having that as a reminder, uh, the idea of, of always be jumping of, of like continue to do the things that scare you so that it doesn't feel so scary ongoing to keep playing a bigger game. Um, that's where I think I'm, I'm, I need to re- continue to remind myself. And so like having things like this in my environment, watching videos, that's why I keep making the videos I do on my channel of Elon Musk and Steve Jobs and all these people is to try to push me to continue to get better because most people will either tell you how great a job you're doing, which feels great, or they may tell you that you suck, but, but there's nothing in there for you to learn. Like, okay, you don't like the size of my nose. Awesome. Is that a thing? Uh, or are you just pulling it like, Oh no, no. Well, that, not, came, that came too far. That came too quick to you naturally. Some, somebody, thing? somebody left a comment yesterday. Like, okay, Baldy with the big nose. Why is your face on this? It's like, okay. Like, what do you learn from that? Nothing. This person hates their life. Awesome. Um, but the people, there's very few people who can, who can push you in a loving way forward, who can say you, you could be here. And that's actually what you want, not what they want, not their map for your life, but like you want to be here and you could be here and you're not doing enough to get there. I love you. Let's go. And to surround yourself with those people. And if you don't have them in your life to have the video versions of it, what I'm trying to do at scale to have this content that whether it's me or Steve or Elon or Oprah or whoever, the more you hear that message, the more they kind of pull you along to help you get to where you want to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so super, super appreciative of this, You're welcome. Uh, that, that reminder and, and that moment in the car was probably the most difficult thing that I had to go through, at least recently, that whole trip was lots of, we do hard things moments, but that moment in the car was, I think the only time that I just felt completely lost, hopeless and unsure of what to do. I don't think I ever knew that. I don't think you've ever shared that story with me. There we go. We went deep. I mean, that whole tour, though, was rough. I mean, even think about the idea for this tour. So it was 90 days, 23 cities. It was supposed to be a, co- it was supposed to be a, a coffee shop hangout. Thing, yeah, there, right? there were three scary moments, you know, in that, in that tour. And it kind of divided up by the three months. So initially it was, I'm going to go take my wife to all these cities in North America because she wanted to travel. I'm going to do coffee shop meetups in all these cities because it's super fun for me to do. And I told my agent, Steve, and he said, no, no coffee shop meetups. You have to charge for the event. And immediately my heart starts beating. And why? Because I'm afraid of disappointing people. I'm afraid nobody's going to show up. I'm afraid that I'm going to charge. If somebody comes to a coffee shop and one person shows up or 40 people show up, it doesn't matter. It's a free thing at a coffee shop. Great. You do a paid event and one person shows up feels like a big disappointment or 40 people show up or a hundred people show up. Now you're on the, on the line to deliver because they paid to to be there. And that scared me. Mm -hmm. And so because it scared me, then you have to do it right. The boom, boom, boom test. Your heart's going like this, then boom, boom, boom. Then means you have to do it. And, and I got to face that fear every four days. It's not like just one event. It's okay. Every four, that, it went well in Columbus. Now we got to do it all over again in Cleveland. What if nobody shows up? <laughs> now we got to do it all over again in Cincinnati. What if nobody shows up? Right? Every day, every four days, you get to face that fear again. And I think it's actually a great way to do it because a month in, it was a three month tour, a month in, it stopped feeling painful. It but stopped a month feeling in, you big. also, it's interesting though, because one, so it wasn't that you raised your standards. It was you, ra- Steve, your agent forced you to raise your stakes, right? Like the stakes became real. And I can remember you in January preparing your content, rehearsing your content, bringing people in for a beta, figuring out what's working. I went down to Pittsburgh for the first one. Great event. You're working, you're working, working. But when you say a month in, it became less scary. 
a month in, you actually got rid of all the crutches. Like, like you broke the format that you were using because you were so nervous or scared. Well, well, here's the thing, right? So yes, you're right. So like it, it, it broke into three different sections. First month was just doing it and getting and paying for it or getting, getting paid for it and fear of disappointing people. And then, then that became, okay, I could see you for the next two months. This just going, you know, no problem. We got this. Just do the same thing. And if whatever, if 10 people show up to this one or 80 people to that one, it wasn't a fear anymore because I was already facing it. So then I got, I got an idea. And this is maybe a little bit of a like disappointment in myself. I got an idea to say it was a very structured format. And I got the feeling of I want to just do Q&A. But do you use the structured format because you were so afraid of yes. disappointing everyone? Yes. I, because I, I, naturally you Q&A everything. Like you, you like to just show up, but, but you were so afraid that you use the structure that goes against your superpowers in order to overcompensate for something. And it, this and it wasn't helped even me the best identify the superpower though, right? So if, if I was doing a speech, for example, a keynote speech, it would always be almost memorized hmm. prior to the tour. So anything I was doing, uh, maybe not an interview, um, but any kind of presentation would be, would be rehearsed, would be close to memorized. I wouldn't get a hundred percent, but there was always structure and format and a little bit of, of playing and, and fun moments, but it was mostly, I knew where we were going. So a month in, I, I think I want to make it, this is kind of getting boring, not the people, but the format, it's not challenging anymore. I would love to do more more freestyle Q and a just show up and hope that good stuff happens. And I didn't go right from idea to action because I was afraid it took me. I remember um, we were getting to the West coast and we had, it was Sacramento was the furthest state. And then we had LA before that. And we had something else before that. And I've been thinking about it for a while maybe two weeks and I didn't act on it. You know, I go to the city, I do the, I do my standard thing. I'm too afraid. So I, I go back to what we originally had planned and give a great event, but like, mm, I could have done a little bit more to play. And then I remember I was doing a live cause I was going live every day. And I was started, started talking about it. I started putting it out there. Like, Hey, I'm, I'm thinking about switching it up and just going live. And, and if whatever, if it doesn't work, then I can fall back to my, default plan. And I remember somebody joined me on my live from Sacramento, not like in the stream, but she was in the chat. And she said, when you come to Sacramento, do the live, I'll support you. <laughs> Cause I've been talking about it. And I, I, I loved it. I love the believe that's believe. Right it was there. Belie I loved it so much that I said, you know what? I'm doing it in LA which was the stop before my next stop. Cause I was on the fence for LA. I've been on the fence for, you know, two weeks <clears throat> and that comment gave me the permission to do it now. And my next event was LA and there was our biggest event of all of them on the tour. And it was totally freestyle and some people loved it. Some people didn't like it as much. We had people who came back a second time. They joined me in other spots and then they brought their family to join me in LA. And some people said, oh my God, it was so much better. And other people were like, oh, I like what you did before better. Either way, you're always going to expect some people love it. Some people won't. But it was the feedback of the person from Sacramento who gave me the permit. Even me, like Evan Carmichael at this stage, still getting that fear, insecurity, and somebody else giving me permission to go off and do it. And, I, and my life obsession is shortening down that window. You know, mm -hmm. it took me in that scenario two weeks to go from idea to action and other things I do idea to action right away. Other things maybe a little bit longer, but I think this is a human issue where we're a lot of people take three years before they ever do anything or 10 years that they never do it because of all the fears and insecurities and I'm trying to find as many, as many ways, techniques, tools for myself, as well as for others to just shorten that gap. So you start actually living the life that you want. That type of conversation, that type of next level talk is why I love the man so much. 
key takeaways for me. Number one, chase what excites you because you honestly never know when you're going to hit on something that becomes the thing you become known for. Number two, learn how to stop judging yourself because it makes you doing you so much easier. And number three, no matter how well you know someone, there's always more to the story if you just ask. Remember, those of us who have something to prove can show the world and ourselves that we have what it takes to make it happen. But you have to think big. You've got to be bold and you must say yes. Now, if you love Next Level Conversations, like the one I just had with Evan, you have got to check out me talking to Anthony Trucks. He blew my mind. Click on the link. I will see you over there. If you think about this, a gap between who you are and what you have and the person who has what you want. I got the gap for things I want to do, it's, but I just realized what the gap means, right?